anchor, a 2-1-4 ERA this season, holding it down on the defensive side. Leading things off for South Dakota, leadoff hitter Tatum Velada at the plate. We are underway on Rocky Top. First pitch coming in for a low strike from Pickens. Yeah, and again, that, that ball not even really in the zone not to pick not to pick on the first pitch but you know it's your reaction time just is so tough to to get that barrel on the ball and again as a slapper and you're running at it you're giving yourself even less time that's it's a tough position to be in Velada was the leadoff hitter last year has been moved around in the infield back and forth in middle infielders but she's been a staple on this coyotes offense Straight three looking picking starts off her Friday with a punch out. Yeah, again, you know, the first pitch not really in the zone. Second pitch we're looking at. The, the, the third one, this was a screwball on the outside part of the plate. And honestly, I, I would love to see that pitch at least maybe two balls further. And uh, But great spot at the knees but for a two strike pitch. Try to get that ball further off the plate. That will bring up two-hole hitter Autumn Iverson, just a freshman on this Coyotes squad. Head coach Robert Wagner with a good mix of veterans and also newcomers. Ten returners, ten newcomers on this Coyotes roster this year. 1-0 pitch, and Iverson hits this hard to Gibson right at her glove side, and Gibson throws a one for no problem. Two down now for the Lady Vols. It's fun and different to see Gibson over there at third base. She was your everyday first baseman last year and she can she can move she can play that hot corner sometimes it's a tough tough adjustment but they had a good reaction to that senior three-hole hitter gabby moser fouls this one off for strike one moser a veteran on this team a leader who coach wagner has turned to before and is turning to even more this season as south dakota lost two key starters very early this year their left fielder Alyssa thorson and third baseman alexis lusts both out most likely for the remainder of the season count goes to one and one with the ball low in inside coach wagner talking to us earlier this week says this is a team that's a work in progress but he's not calling it a rebuild says the competition's been good they're getting better every weekend that's what this weekend's for as well yeah it's tough M much like Tennessee you know having to reshuffle things on defense and offensively with those injuries with those those women out so it's tough it's tough to to be that next person up to fill that role Moser now a 2-1 count Hits this one foul hard at the first base dugout. When you're going up against the top team in the country like the Lady Vols, you're gonna face top pitching, such as Carlin Pickens, and the hope Coach Wagner says is facing tough pitching will get us better for Summit League play as Moser fouls this one back. When you face top 10 pitchers in the country, strikeout pitchers, power pitchers that are in the mid-70s yeah. like Carlin Pickens. It's only going to make that Summit League play that much better. For sure. They they may not see 70 for the rest of the year, but you know they, they've seen it. They say that they can have seen it and can attack the rest of the, the Summit League play with confidence. Moser now with a full count. Two down. Here's a look at Tennessee head coach Karen Weekly with Karen's playbook. Of course, the Bible, the softball Bible. And a good look at Julia Katsoyanopoulos behind the plate, catching today after being first base in their previous game. The 3 2 pitch from Pickens. Swing and a miss, strike three as Pickens retires the side. Lady Vols go one, two, three. So we had their tough to face. Yeah, you're not going to get an easy out, one through nine. So you, there's no pitching around anybody to get to somebody else. You're going to have to face each, each batter to the best of your ability. Weta King, first pitch to Malloy. And Malloy hits this one into the 5-6 hole just like that, already aboard for the Lady Vols. Taking a look at the Tennessee Lady Vols lineup for game two today. 
They were had the hot sticks in the first game, trying to keep that going. And then highlighted right there, first baseman Laura Miller. We have to mention her because she had not one, not two, but three home runs today. But as we mentioned, just a tough lineup, one through nine, because of the combination of both speed and power. And speaking of speed, Kiki Malloy just stole her 14th base last game. You always know she has the green light to go when she's on the bag. And first pitch strike to two-hole hitter Destiny Rodriguez. Rodriguez not in the lineup last game. Now at starting at second base today and swinging a hot bat. 357 so far this year. She's improved a lot already since her first year with the program last season. 0-1 pitch to Rodriguez. Malloy takes off for two and she's going to be in there safely. Make that stolen base number 15 for Kiki Malloy. Yeah, and much like the Missouri State game, not a terrible release, not a terrible reaction time by uh, by the catcher. But I mean, the, again, you just you gotta be quicker. <laughs> it's Kiki Malloy. You know, it's it's you can put your best against her best, and and that's she's one of the best in the country. One one pitch to Rodriguez fouls this one off. Safe to say there's no hesitation. You hesitate just the slightest bit, you're not going to be able to get Malloy at two. Exactly. And I mean, even even if you don't, you better be really efficient in your motions or else, you know, you're going to waste time trying to get her her out. And so, yeah, she's she's not leaving early. She's not, you know, there, there's been a lot of that this year with, uh, with runners leaving early and she's none of that. Rodriguez hits a line drive over to first baseman White for the quick out. Malloy stays put at two. Take a look at the defensive lineup for the Coyotes and Coach Wagner telling us there's a lot of shifting in the infield because they lost two of their key starters. Left fielder Lissa Thorson and third baseman Alexis Lux. So basically he told us second goes to short, short goes to third and they're working on it. And that's yeah, what those, this weekend is for, exactly. trying to fill in those pieces sure. to the puzzle. Yeah, and I mean, you can say, you know, you see in the lineup infield, but there's so much that goes into these different infield positions, and second base is different from third, and shortstop is different from first, and so you might be ready for, for one position, but when your name is called, you better be ready. Hard hit right up the middle to center field. In comes Kiki Malloy. She'll be in safely as the Lady Vols quickly get on the board thanks to an RBI single from Destiny Rodriguez. I think that even without the bobble from Iverson, Malloy is off to the races. She's going, she's going home either way. She doesn't even kind of hesitate. So uh, great, great piece of hitting, great uh, hard hit up the middle. And who's been hitting it hard all day? Lady balls have been swinging the hot bats, including this young woman right here, Zeta Pooney, had a home run back in their first game against Missouri State earlier today. She takes a ball low in the zone to start her at bat. Zeta Pooney, a senior, her second year with a program from Carson, California. It's made an immediate impact on Rocky Top since transferring over from Oklahoma two seasons ago. So runner on first, one down. It's Pooney takes a strike outside, even the count 1-1. These transfers have really been a storyline for this Tennessee team. You have Pooney, you have Nugent, you have Kutsoinopoulos, you have Gottschall. Uh, you know, it's it's been one of those things where Coach Weekly goes into the transfer portal knowing what she's looking for, knowing what the need is. Pooney powers this one straight away center, no doubt. Zeta Pooney with a two home run home run to put the Lady Vols up 3-0. Absolute shot, deep part of the field. Uh, but Pooney has, has needed some of that confidence, has needed some big hits this weekend. Her, her average, her, her numbers are probably not exactly what she's been looking for, but you know, she is such a force to be reckoned with in this lineup. Zeta Pooney also a huge part of the Lady Vols run in the World Series last year. She was terrific during tournament time, bringing the power, helped launch Tennessee into the program and led the Big Orange with 60 RBIs, named to the 
Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. As for this young woman, Laura Mueller transferring into Tennessee this season, and to say she's made an impact is would be a massive understatement. She's in three at-bats today. Well, she's homered all three times. Yeah, I left her off my little list there a moment ago, but she has made an impact immediately. And, and we talked about last game, it's, it's hard coming from being everything for an MTSU squad and then coming to a really potent lineup to try to break through and and be an impact player but Mueller has found her way. Mueller gets jammed that's going to be a, a pop-up out from Velada at shortstop so Coyotes with two outs and that's that's a crucial second out when you can sit down Mueller get her to pop out. Yeah, and it's, I would say, you know, for Mueller, sometimes it's almost a, a relief get that monkey off your back to, you know, you feel those expectations. And, yeah, that was definitely a, a hard swing, but just got jammed up a little bit. That will bring up Sophia Nugent to the plate. Nugent was behind the plate at catcher last game, now in left field today, transferring over from Oklahoma. Hitting 239 coming into the game. Trying to keep this rally going for the Lady Vols. Takes a ball inside. So I guess they didn't use up all their hits from last game. No, no, they're still <laughs> saving. There's still some in there. Yes. It's always, it's, uh, Coach Reed at UTC when I, when I played at Chattanooga, that was always what he talked about. He was always save so em, worried. Save em. Yeah, you know, we want, we want to get these hits and um, it's just always a, uh, a question mark that next game did you use them all do you have more and this Tennessee team starting right where they left off last game 14 hits in that la their last game against Missouri State winning 16 nothing now trying to keep the momentum going again here as Nugent takes strike one inside we get a 3-1 count Nugent had a great debut for the Big Orange. Her first game start the season. She went two for four with an RBI double and a three-run home run. No shortage of power. 3-1 pitch. Low in the zone for strike two. Nice pitch to even the count from Whitakey. Yeah, really well-placed changeup. She, and she's throwing it at any count. And she's missed a couple, but you have to keep throwing it. You have to keep having confidence in it because that's how you're going to keep this uh, Lady Vol offense off off balance three two pitch from what king and nugent fouls this one off towards coach weekly coach weekly having to shift some players around the infield after zeta pooty underwent surgery this off season and she had them in the fall every player kind of play a different position basically see what she had and see what the possibilities were and with the addition of Nugent this year, transferring from Oklahoma, Nugent found a home behind the plate and also at first base as she takes ball four inside. Well, finding that everyday catcher was really the, the big thing that Tennessee needed and found that in, in Nugent. Not that Kutsoinopoulos, I mean, she caught last game. She's she's done an, an amazing job uh, behind the plate, but, you know, that's not, that's not her main position. Well, actually, her main position is outfield, but she's not going to be there either. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 important to, you know, in that in that transfer portal, Coach Weekly has talked about trying to plug plug people in and go in there with intent. Taylor Panel takes first pitch ball. A sophomore hitting 275. Played in right field last game. Back there today for game two. Runner on first as she rolls this one over to short. A nice glove by Velada. She goes to two for the force out, and it's in time. South Dakota gets out of the inning, but not before Tennessee starters out for injuries, and they're still trying to fit all the pieces to the puzzle. They are, but they have a great leader in Wagner that has been there, two, like you said, two-time Women's College World Series champion, and that kind of leadership that, of somebody that has been there will help eventually lead this program to success. Leading things off for the Coyotes, top of the second is first baseman Delaney White, and one of the big keys Coach Wagner said for his offense this weekend, be more aggressive early in counts. 
as White takes a hack this one, fouls it back, strike one. Well, and there's nothing more frustrating to a coach when, you know, you see that pitcher working ahead than to take that first pitch strike or that second pitch strike. You know, as a, as a pitcher, you know, you want to work smarter, not harder. You want to make sure that you're getting ahead and not have to work so much. Swing and a miss, strike two. So White, very aggressive early in this at bat. And yeah. as you said, Michelle, when you're facing someone like Pickens, you don't want her to throw her favorite pitch. No, no, I, you don't, yeah, exactly. You don't want to get played around with late in the count. So put a good stick on it early. A take by White for ball one, asked for help. And she did not go. Great time to introduce our umpires today behind the plate, Ted Broyles. At first, Heath Walker and Third base ump today, Dave Renneker. One, two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Carlin Pickens gets her inside for her second strike, third strikeout of the day. And there's Tennessee head coach, Karen Weekly, the queen of Rocky Top in her 23rd season as the Tennessee head coach. Third is her as a solo head coach after her husband, Ralph, now a advisor for the team, but Coach Weekly excited about these Lady Falls. This one's hit up the middle, but Faw has no problem getting to it in time. She throws to first for the second out of the inning. And Coach Weekly, you know, the big story last year was getting over the hump and getting to the Women's College World Series for the first time in 2015. Well, they did that. They made an excellent run, a historic season all around. And now the question, how do you make it back to Oklahoma City? Not an easy thing to do. It's not. It, it won't be, you know, year after year. You have to find your way each time. Each team is different. Each field is different. You're returning four very capable pitchers, but you lose a Rogers. You lose a Donahue. Uh, you lose a, a Boutte. You know, it's it's so important to, uh, you know, try to build up those players that you have. And, and Coach Weekly has a couple of young faces that – um, need that experience. Jones takes ball two, low and inside. Riley Jones, a third baseman, a junior for this Coyotes team. Has a little bit of pop to her bat. Coach says he's had to move her around a little bit, moved her to third because of Tusk's injury as she swings and misses for strike one. He says it's been a tough transition to third base for Jones as she was coming over from the middle infielder, from middle infield over from shortstop. Not always an easy thing to do as she check swings and umpire says she goes, Broyles behind the plate. So that's strike two for Riley Jones. Two down, nobody on, and two, two count, two's all around. takes the ball low in the zone to bring it full. Coyotes went one, two, three last inning at the plate. Trying to get a two out rally here. Started by Jones, the three, two pitch. This one hit hard to Fa. Fa fires over to first for the third out. Lady Vols go one, two, three once again. Summit League and then also opposing hitters hitting just 241. That ERA also is the 29th best in the nation. This is their bread and butter right here and it's gonna come in handy against this lineup today. It is, this is a tough staff to face. You know, when you can keep your innings and strikeouts about even or have more strikeouts than you do innings, I mean, that's the sign of a really good pitcher. You're, you're putting at least one person away per inning and that makes it easier on your defense and the South Dakota defense can kind of Rest easy knowing that, that they're going to get some weak contact if the ball does get put in play. Leading things off here, bottom of the second for Tennessee, Julia Katsoyanopoulos, senior, second year with the program. They're transferring over from Arizona. one -oh pitch and beautiful change up from Whitaking, but just misses low. And again, she's throwing that, that's a 1-0 count. You know, that that takes a lot of guts to throw that in that count. So she must really believe in this off-speed pitch. Again, she didn't get a strike called, but you gotta show it. You gotta show that you have it. 
2-0 pitch to Katsoyanopoulos, and this gets away from Chikova Kolasi behind the plate. Weta King coming in with the second most innings on the pitching staff behind their workhorse, Clara Edwards, who threw earlier today, is also in the lineup. 3-0 pitch, ball four. Katsoyanopoulos reaches on a ball, and Lee Valls have their leadoff hitter on base. They're keeping, keeping walks down, keeping you know the, those errors, the free bases, that's what's going to be the key for the South Dakota defense. Try to continue to limit damage. You know, it's 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 easy to say. <laughs> it's it's much harder to do. It's a really uh, experienced Tennessee team, but uh, the more that they can keep the freebies down, the better. Just keep them off the bases, right? Sim yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, simple. How right? is that? <laughs> Bella Fa, the freshman shortstop at the plate. She had a hard hit against the left field wall by the dugout earlier in the last game. Great to see that she's okay and back in the lineup. 1-0 count to Fa. She lets this one go, gets behind Jakova Kolatsi and Katsoyanopoulos will steal two. Katsoyanopoulos, not with a ton of speed, but that'll be her second stolen base, or actually, I guess you <laughs> will be a, a pass ball, tough pitch. To it catch. is, yeah, it's, uh, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, that is a free base that, you know, is avoidable, and you gotta control the controllables and make sure that keep these balls in, in play. Fa drops this one down in front of the pitcher and the throw is off point. That's gonna be a base hit potentially for Bella Fa. Let's take another look at that one. Nice execution here by Fa dropping the bunt. And then the throw just a tiny bit to the, to the infield side of first baseman White. Well, it was tough. She, uh, she turned and the fa her face mask kind of came up and made her come off and they're, they're gonna call her safe. So Fa with a successful sneaky bunt, sack bunt. And now Lady Vols with runners on the corners as Kutsoyanopoulos advances to three. And now that, that pass ball that one hurts even more as Kutsoyanopoulos is now 60 feet closer to home plate. It looks like we're gonna have a review here. I believe the call on the field yeah. was that she was sick. The umpires are back and have made their decision. And the call on the field again was oh, safe and they overruled and called her out. Interesting. I just, I didn't see I didn't see it. I, I thought that the ball pulled her off much, you know, well before Fog got to the base, but this video doesn't lie. Call is officially changed. So now some momentum here with the Coyotes as they get their first out of the inning. One runner on third and the All-American star center fielder Kiki Malloy takes a first pitch ball inside. And that's such a useful tool for our game. You know, it hasn't always been around. A lot of schools and conferences still aren't able to utilize it. But, you know, our, our game is, is fast, and that didn't take, you know, too much time out of everybody's day to go make sure that they got that one right. Malloy takes a change up for strike one. One for one today. She's started off both games with a single. Actually, last game she went four for four, scored all four times. It, it wasn't flashy, you know. She she didn't have quite the power that she normally does, but it was absolutely effective hitting through the five six hole. Uh, you know, on the ground hard. She made stuff happen in counts that weren't exactly going her way as well. So, 
Um, not the Malloy that we are used to seeing, but the home run know. queen. Sure, yeah, but four for four is nothing to, <laughs> to shy yeah, away from. Not at all, not at all. Well, and again, it goes back to just how potent this lineup is, right? So if Malloy sure. is able to just get on, doesn't need to hit a long ball, then you have several others behind her. Zeta Pooney, who homered last game. Laura Miller, who came up with three home runs. That's how difficult this lineup is to face. As Malloy takes a ball low and inside. That will bring the count full to three and two. A big moment here as Coyotes just had a call reversed for their first out. Julia Katsoyanopoulos, the runner on third, and Kiki Malloy with a chance here to hit her in. The 3-2 pitch from Wedeking and check swing foul. Well, that's what makes that overturn call that much more important for South Dakota. You give Tennessee an inch, they're gonna take a mile. They've shown that time and time again. And so, you know, Faw's safe. You have runners on first and second. Faw, you, you know, will definitely take second base. And then now you have Kiki Malloy and two runners on. So getting that out was, was super important. Malloy drills this one foul down to the left field corner. Malloy set the single season record for home runs last year for the Lady Vols with 25. She also led all of NCAA Division I softball athletes with 25 home runs. And then earlier this season became the career home run, home run leader. Is now at 63 long balls in her career. One out. The 3-2 pitch from Wedeking, and Malloy pops this one up. Could it be trouble? Nope. Galata's there for the out, and that's a crucial second out. Anytime that you can get the All-American to pop up, that's a win. Well, when you watch Malloy hit, you're not going to see her carry that into her next at bat. You know, she really has that mentality of, yeah, you beat me once, but you're not going to beat me again. And you're not going to beat me again in the same spot, and that's what great hitters do. So when you, you know, if you're a young player watching this, if you're, you know, playing yourself, it's it's important to be able to flush those those situations and, and be able to move on to the next thing. Two-hole hitter, Destiny Rodriguez to the plate for the Lady Vols. She had an RBI single last inning to start off her day today. Hitting 395 as a sophomore just continues to improve in this program. 1-0 pitch, and Rodriguez fouls this one off. Well, and Rodriguez is a fun story for me because she wasn't an everyday starter last year. She ended up having to be with injuries and whatnot to the to the middle infield, and so she really stepped up when her team needed her and you know got limited time once Lair Boutte got back in the lineup, but you know, she was a role player. Rodriguez fouls another one off or over towards Chris Malvo there. But when we're talking about what it takes to get back to the College World Series or what to, like, just how to get to a regional um, or win the SEC, whatever it might be, it is, you know, kind of swallowing your pride and, and, you know, not having an ego about it and being like, where do you need me, coach? How, how can I best help this team? Rodriguez pops this one up and in her two-way player starting things off. Top of the third for the Coyotes. She takes a ball low in the zone. And this road stretch specifically for the Coyotes is 13 games in nine days. This is their spring break, and safe to say there's no partying this spring break for the Coyotes. No, it is a business trip, that's for sure. It's it's tough. That's you know, we talked about road road wins and midweeks, and all this is a grind because what people tend to forget is these are student athletes. They're going to school. They have classes, they have tests, you know, they're they're on the bus uh, doing their schoolwork, studying for tests, um, in contact with their classmates on the road somewhere, and uh, it is, it's a grind. Edwards swings and misses for strike two. Pickens coming inside to jam her a little bit. Pickens back in the circle, already three strikeouts so far. Coming off a big win over 10th rate Clemson on Tuesday night. This one hit hard over to second base. Rodriguez makes the throw to one for the first down of the inning. That's a tough play to make. That ball is carrying her towards the middle. She's got to stop her momentum and be able to turn and throw. And that's why I was in the second base. <laughs> I, I, was, I was over at first just kind of hanging out. Uh, that, that was some 
really good footwork, some really good movement by Destiny Rodriguez. That will bring up the other Clara on the team, Clara, Clara Chakova Kolatsi, a Czech native of Czech Republic and also player on the Czech Republic national team. She is behind the plate for the Coyotes today. Coach gives her the nickname Czech, and I can see why. Her last name is a mouthful, but I'm going to do my best. And I will avoid it at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> a check swing by check. Make it 1 1 count. Senior on this team, one of the veterans that's trying to help this Coyotes team win its first ever Summit League title. 1 1 pitch from Pickens inside for ball two. Now you can see she's a leader just in her body language and the way that she. You know, place catcher, releases the ball, the way that she moves. Um, she's she's a real asset to this squad. 2-1 pitch. Hits this one hard, but Rodriguez able to get a glove on it, but it goes off the glove of Miller, and Chakova Kolotsky is safe at first base. Will be a error, most likely, but still a base runner for the Coyotes. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> that is absolutely uh, something that South Dakota needs, and they'll take any base runner that, that they can. But uh, Rodriguez just kind of maybe rushing that throw a little bit, kind of taking her towards the hole, but momentum took her a little bit far. That will bring up Olivia Conti at the plate. A senior second baseman hitting 333. Uh, 375, check that, out of Mainville, Ohio. Rounding out this lineup for the Coyotes. Swing and a miss, strike two. Uh, runner, base runners might be hard to come by in this game for South Dakota, so any chance you have a runner on, an opportunity that South Dakota needs to capitalize when you're facing this Lady Vols team. 0-2, fouls this one back. Well, yeah, and it's a good time to, to test yourself. Can you take that extra base? Can you lay that bunt down? You know, you've got to be able to, to do those little things. If you can do them well, then you're able to be competitive. And then once they hit that Summit League, you know, they're going to be well, well ready for it. Preseason always preparation for conference play. Lady Vols start conference play next weekend. Coyotes at the end of this month. The one-two pitch to Conti, and she takes low in the zone for ball two. It's hard not to read too much into it, too. You know, I've been on squads where we have, uh, you know, started out, you know, four and one and four for, and you know, you're like, oh my gosh, here we go. It's going to be a rough season, but you know, really, the season is still very young. This one fouled back by Conti. A nice battle at the plate as winds start to pick up a little bit here at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. We've been fortunate that the ugly weather has stayed away for the most part. The sun tried to peek out earlier. Now we're settling in for a beautiful night of softball. The 2-2 pitch. Pickens goes upstairs for the punch out. Pickens with her fourth strikeout today. Yeah, this one up in the zone. And she's tried to on that outside corner to righties uh, do a little bit more of that, that rise ball. But that one comes back in. That's a very tough pitch to hit when you're expecting it more. You're expecting it lower and you're expecting it more in the zone. Top of the lineup now for the Coyotes. Tatum Velada hits the first pitch. She sees a roller to Fa, no problem. Lady Vols end the inning, leave one runner on. Tennessee still leading three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Just and find a game plan and stick to it. Leading things off, bottom of the third for Tennessee. McKenna Boo Gibson at third base today. Line, lined out to first base earlier in her first at bat. Gibson, one of those players that has progressed throughout her career here on Rocky Top, named the USA softball top 50 watch list. She takes a ball upstairs 
I get a 2-0 count. Gibson, along with Kiki Malloy, both named to the top 50 players to watch. And not a surprise coming off the season she had last year. Career highs in batting average, runs, hits, doubles, you name it. 2-0 pitch now to Gibson. When you think of how many players there are in Division One, to have two on one team named to that list, I think is a, a great honor for this Tennessee team. Absolutely. Also leading the SEC with the most preseason honorees, Kiki Malloy, Gibson, also Zeta Pooney, Pickens, and Gottschall, the most named to the preseason All-SEC team. And that's because this is a Tennessee team with a big target on its back, the Lady Vols. Won the regular season title last year and also the tournament title. The first time they've ever won both. Made a run in the Women's College World Series. And then now opening up 2024, they came in at the new positions. And, and his key this weekend when it comes to defense, he says, just be consistent with their responsibilities. Yeah, make, make the plays that you're supposed to. Make a few that maybe you're not supposed to. And uh, that'll, that'll limit that damage. 3-1 pitch to Gibson, evens the count. I thought it was neat when coach went out there, you know, you saw a lot of really serious faces and then all of a sudden the smiles cracked and uh, you know, trying to loosen up his defense. Hey guys, it's, it's still softball, let's loosen up a little bit. Sometimes a smile is all you need. The 3-2 pitch to Gibson, change up, she holds up but pops up as Moser is underneath it and makes the grab for the first down of the inning. Yeah, it was really good back control by Gibson, but you know she's still expecting it faster. It's it seemed, and so you know got that screwball, which is is uh, Wedekin's money pitch. You know she she got that screwball on time and uh, got that changeup on that last pitch, and you know didn't miss it by much. But that was that was a great pitch. Zeta Pooney now at the plate for Tennessee. Takes first pitch ball. One for one today with a, oh yeah, two run home run. Part of that power that we've seen the Lady Vols not shy away from today. As they extended their winning streak to seven in a row with a win over Missouri State. Trying to make it eight here as Weta King comes in with the off speed. And what have you seen from Weta King so far? She seems to have settled down a little bit more since that first inning. She has. She's done a, a great job of mixing pitches, mixing zones. Um, we're seeing that change up at really any count. We've seen it with two strikes, you know, 3-1, 3-2, 1-0. It doesn't really seem to matter. You know, she, she's able to, to put that pitch pretty much anywhere that she wants. And to have great command of your change up, I think, is really important. You've got to have at least one off-speed pitch because no one, especially at this level, is afraid of, of speed. A 2-1 pitch here to Zeta Pooney. She holds up. Umpire asks for help, says no go. That's the first base umpire, Heath Walker. Pooney with the two-run home run. Back in the first inning. Trying to continue the momentum here for the Lady Vols. 3-1 pitch. She rolls over this one, but it's going to go foul towards Jones at third. Pooney in her second year with the Lady Vols, a transfer from Oklahoma two seasons ago and underwent surgery her upper body this offseason. And so she's been cleared to hit, which is great. Hasn't quite been cleared to play in the field yet. That's why you see a little reshuffling in the infield for the Lady Vols, but a great sign. And she's hitting and is progressing in the right direction. 3-2, fouls this one off. Nice battle at the plate for both Pooney and Wedekin. And that's what's interesting. Those are two screwballs back to back, uh, or maybe even three. Check swing, you know, foul ball, um, and then, you know, I just wonder, you know, three and two, do you throw a change up here? Do you, you know, go outside? You definitely don't want to leave it too far over the plate. Three-two pitch from Weta King, and this one hits Zeta Pooney, look like, on her right arm. She takes her free bag. That will now bring it, no matter where it was. And what was impressive to me was she, she took a low outside pitch 
you know, over the left field fence. She's incredibly strong, incredibly efficient in her swing, and uh, very, very powerful. Transfer over from MTSU this season and has made an immediate impact on this Lady Vols lineup. It's at first base today, Amanda Allen, the pinch runner at first for Pooney. As Miller takes her first pitch low and inside for ball one. There's Amanda Allen. So Lady Vols with a runner on first, one down. Laura Miller trying to stay hot at the plate. Wedeking trying to cool her off. The 1-0 pitch from Wedeking. Inside for strike one. That's a good adjustment. She had a hit batsman and then kind of took some off of that next pitch. That next pitch was a screwball and just kind of lost it. And then to come right back, that's the sign of a really mature pitcher to be able to come back and uh, come right up under the hands like that once again. 1-1 one, one pitch to Mueller. Fouls this one off. Mueller was a catalyst for the MTSU Blue Raiders last season, helping them make an NCAA regional and had a hot bat all through that tournament. Now trying to crack this Lady Vols lineup and three home runs in one game is one way to do it. One two pitch in the dirt and taken off from first is all in. She's in easy at second. Look at Clara Shakova Kalatsi behind the plate. You saw her kind of say my bad there. It's a tough play and all has got some speed. Yeah, that ball was in the dirt pretty early and she kept it in well. I mean, she she could have panicked. She could have, th you know, involved the center fielder on that play, but she didn't. She it was very mature in the way that she went about that. Hard hit over to short and it's not going to be in time. Miller is safe at first. I'm sorry, she was out at first. And that will move all in to third base. Hard shot up the middle to shortstop Velada makes a nice play on the ball to get that crucial second out. So now South Dakota has two outs, runner on third, trying to get out of this inning. As Sophia Nugent comes to the plate. Nugent popping up to shortstop her last at bat. One old pitch inside for strike one. Mila well, King just going after him with that inside pitch. I, I love that. Attack the inside corner. You know, against these tough hitters, everybody, you know, kind of shies away, goes outside, you know, curve, drop, off speed on that outside corner. I love attacking that inside corner. I think that that's incredibly gutsy, incredibly, incredibly uh, mature pitching. This one fouled off towards the left field line. sit down someone who's been hidden and out of the park too. Talk about a crucial second out. She was able to get Miller just a ground ball. Yeah, to be able to have her keep it on the ground and let your defense work, that's huge. You know, she needs to be able to trust her defense. You're going to give up contact, but you know, limit, limit how hard it is. And again, off of Miller, who we've seen you know, do some damage today. That's a, that's a huge out. So two down now for the Coyotes. Runner on third, and they want to keep her there. Nugent trying to bring home her teammate. One, two count. Nugent swings high, fouls it up. You saw her earlier t talking to Tennessee hitting coach Chris Malvo, his third year with the Lady Vols, and really emphasizes that rotation in the swing, using the bottom half to create power in the upper half. As this one is in the dirt, gets by Chikova Kalatsi for 
a quick seven second, but all in holds up at third. And it's been fun watching their evolution as a squad under his tutelage because since coming from Missouri, you'll see some of the players that have more of a split grip, um, are more open, you know, have really been trying to, you know, get as much power as they can out of their swing. Split grip is debatable. I'm not trying to get in an argument with anybody over that, but, um, you know, it, they have found, you know, they, they got that off of a drill that they really liked that he had, had shown them. And so some rocked, rocked that for a while. And so it's, it's fun to watch their maturity and, um, you know, try, try different and sometimes bigger movements to get more uh, out of their swing. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Nugent. Fouls this one off again. It's also a big reason why Tennessee averaged nearly seven runs per game last season. Saw their home run numbers go up. The batting average goes up. You saw all around offense take a huge step forward in 2023, which eventually helped lead them to that Women's College World Series. 2 2 pitch, way upstairs. Jacoba Colazzi able to get a glove on that. I don't know how, I mean, she's not small, but she really got up there quick. That was impressive. And a big smile wow, from yeah, Wedeke. Like, Thank you. She says, I'm, I'm going to buy you lunch <laughs> for that one. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for stopping that one. <laughs> a huge stop with a runner on third. Two outs, 3 2 pitch. Change up, gets. Nugent to pop up to center and Iverson able to make the grab. So, Lady The conference that likely could be anybody's game at the end of the day. Leading things off for the Coyotes. Top of the fourth, Autumn Iverson, the freshman center fielder, 0 for 1 today. Trying to get something going for the Coyotes here. As Pickens goes way upstairs for ball one. Pickens back in the circle, coming off a big win over 10th ranked Clemson earlier Tuesday. She went six innings. He's able to finish out the nail biter, get a big win. Also picked up her second perfect game of her career earlier this year against Loyola Marymount. This is a young woman that's coming off an SEC freshman of the year season and is building on that right away. 1-1 one, one pitch, check, swing, foul. And she had moments last year where she looked like a freshman. You know, she she had some boo-boos or, you know, maybe some missed pitches where, you know, she's coming from a time where she's used to blowing it by everybody. Maybe you don't need to utilize that changeup or have it be as deceptive as you need it to be. But, you know, this year coming out with a really go-getter mindset and, you're developing more of those pitches that are going to keep hitters uh, off balance. You mentioned that changeup last season, highest percentage of strikeouts on that changeup more than any other pitcher in the country. And asking for help, and Blue says she goes. So strike three looking for Iverson is Pickens now with her fifth strikeout. Well, and with the loss of former Lady Hall's ace, Ashley Rogers, it's that more pertinent that Pickens continues to grow throughout her career. That's true. And, you know, even last year, Gottschall, Pickens, uh, Orsini, Simpson, I mean, it was, it was really a pitch by committee situation where you had Rogers maybe start game one and game three of the series, but you could see on game three, not as, not as sharp. I mean, still a fantastic pitcher, still getting the job done. But, you know, being a fifth year senior, uh, it's it's tough, <laughs> it's tough, your body's done. Um, but, you know, Carlin Pickens, Peyton Gottschall had to, had to pick up a lot of innings last year. Uh, so they're not, it's not new, you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a shock. Definitely not. In I think the Lady Vols fans would agree that Ashley Rogers gave everything she had to that program. But now a one-two punch with Pickens and Gotchel. And Pickens is dealing today is called for second strike on Gabby Moser, a senior right fielder for the Coyotes. 2-2 pitch now to Moser. Fouls this one back. 
South Dakota doing what coach said to do. Take aggressive swings. Take your hacks early. You know, some, sometimes you gotta, you know, play play your odds and with somebody throwing as hard as Pickens does, put your barrel on it, see what happens. Because I bet you it sneaks by somewhere, goes goes pretty hard. She's supplying quite a bit of power. Two two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Make that strikeout number six today for Carlin Pickens. Again, the, the strikeouts are gonna happen. She's she's throwing really well. She's her ball is moving, and that's that's what's tough. Is like it's one thing to throw really hard. It's another thing to throw really hard, and have movement. Uh, that that's ultimately what makes a strikeout pitcher. It's not it's not easy to be not a, not everybody is that. Delaney White now at the plate for South Dakota. Struck out her first at bat. Back in the second inning, 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. A combination of that spin, whether it's that screwball or that curveball, and then plus the rise, yeah. plus the velocity. Yeah. And, and oh yeah, let's mix in a, a lethal changeup too. It's hard to combat that. This one hit hard, almost in the three, four hole, gets away from Rodriguez diving. And that's a nice piece of hitting by Delaney White, making adjustments from her last at bat. Got a great effort by Dusty Rodriguez, and oh, she hits the ground hard. She really gave everything for that ball and just popped out of her glove. Luckily, didn't go for, for Tennessee. Luckily, didn't go you know too deep into the outfield. But you know, South Dakota keeps swinging hard like that. Good, good things are going to happen for them. Alexis Tarazis at the plate now, trying to get this two-out rally alive for the Coyotes as she takes a strike inside. Tarazis, uh, one of several seniors on this squad. A good mix of returners and newcomers for the Coyotes, but still a long way to go in terms of figuring out the identity of this team as Tarasis takes strike two. Coach Wagner saying that this will be a tough weekend this weekend, but he hopes his team comes out of it on the brighter side. Swing and a miss, strike three. Carlin Pickens, one, two, three. You know, take, take two or three on the road and sweep at home if you can because Otherwise, you know, you're gonna find yourself at the bottom of that conference really quick. But it's it's one of those things where, you know, just depends on who's hot come, come conference time. Looking to stay hot at the plate, Taylor Panel being 289. As she hits this one towards Volana at shortstop. Lana makes the play at one for the first down. Looks like the rain is starting to come down here at Cherry Park early. And how about those fans prepared for anything? Kudos to them. Also see a lot of hoodies and hats. Sometimes in March, you got to prepare for anything. And these dedicated softball fans are going to stick this one out. It looks like umpire behind the plate calling time actually it looks like we have a pitch clock uh violate not a pitch clock violation but a hitter violation you need to step into the box within 10 seconds of the pitcher receiving the ball and so katsoyanopoulos with a strike on her already and now a ball to bring it full, 1-1. One, one. And Michelle, that's a new rule this year. It was 25 second pitch count. Now it's 20 second pitch count with 10 seconds for the batter. Right, I mean, this game, our game moves pretty fast. I think that for the most part, batters and the and the battery have done a good job of you know, keeping, it, keeping it within the, the time frame. But every once in a while we take a little extra time trying to get ready and <laughs> uh, get a sign, you know, what have you. But uh, you know, now our, our game moves moves pretty quickly and haven't seen much of that this year. Well, and with rain coming down, starting to trickle in now, may need a second or two to adjust as Kutsoyanopoulos takes ball way outside. 
And I have to imagine it's also difficult on the pitcher when that rain starts to come down. It's one of the more annoying things as a pitcher. Um, you know, you've got your rosin bag, you got your dirt, you have a towel, you can have whatever. But I mean, the second that you feel that bit of water on the ball, it makes it tough. Katsoyanopoulos pops this up, calling for it is the second baseman, Conti, but she's unable to get it. Looks like maybe a little bit of a miscommunication as that one drops in for a base hit for Katsoyanopoulos. Speaking of annoying things as a pitcher, <laughs> when you get that blue pit, you know, you want to see somebody go all out. You know, I understand having trouble, uh, you know, you feel that other player coming at you, but as the outfielder, just take control, whether it's your ball or somebody else's, you know, have the have the communication to let them know who's taking it. And then somebody get on the somebody get on the ground, you know, somebody may make an effort for it. A pinch hitter here for Bella Fah. Number 16 for the Lady Vols. Cameron Service. This is her 11th appearance of the season and doing pretty well so far, hitting 444 coming into today. She takes first pitch ball. Well, and Michelle, we also talk about how when you're going up against a ranked opponent like the Lady Vols, you can't give them extra outs. You gotta make those easy outs. And then on top of that, some spectacular ones and giving up a pop fly could come back to haunt them. Runner on first. Service at the plate, the 1-0 pitch takes inside for strike one. Well, and were Kutsoinopoulos, you know, a, an all-in, a, a Malloy, you know, one of those Tennessee players with maybe a little bit more speed. She, she might have been off to second. She was, she rounded it. She looked like she was ready to go. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you give them, you know, a little bit of space, they're going to take it. Service hits this one back to the pitcher and Weta King does a nice job going, getting the force out at one. She looked over at Katsoyanopoulos, but decided to go with the safe out. So runner on second now for the Lady Vols, but the Coyotes now have two outs. Two outs and Pekin to deal with. It doesn't really matter who, uh, you know, who, what you're, what you're facing. I mean, when, when you're getting up against Malloy with with two outs. It doesn't it doesn't matter to her. You know she's she's gonna take whatever you you give her and do the best with it. Malloy fouls this one back. The All American center fielder and named to the top 50 USA softball watch list for the third time in her career. Graduate senior, returning for her final year on Rocky Top as she takes. An off-speed pitch for ball one. It's a really good spot. <laughs> I, really, I like that pitch a lot. 0-1, you know, to put you at 0-2 against Kiki Malloy, like, I I like that spot a lot. No, nothing against Ted Broyles, fellow Chad Nugan. He's, he's, he's a good guy, but I love that call. Kiki rolls this one over to third, and Jones gets her out at one. Coyotes get out of the inning unscathed. Tennessee up. Uh, that ball coming at 74, 75 miles an hour and in on your hands. It's not a fun place to be, but yeah, she's, she's really working that screwball and uh, that changeup a bit as well. Riley Jones leading off the fifth for the Coyotes. She grounded out to shortstop her first at bat in 226 on the season A junior one of 10 upperclassmen she rolls this one foul and see the ponchos coming out ponchos coming out the wind picking up <laughs> the flags in center field my goodness we're starting to play with the elements here at sherry parker lee you can see the the flag's blowing what looks like almost directly out to center field. That could be dangerous. As rain starts to pick up a little bit too. Pickens goes upstairs for strike two on Jones. Yeah, no no problem with controlling the ball right now for Pickens. And like we talked about before, that can be really tough. You know, I've seen drills where pitchers just dunk balls in water and then try, and try to pitch them. And sometimes, you know, when you're preparing for a game like this, that's what you kind of have to do. 
because the batter doesn't care, the umpire doesn't care. You know, you have a lot of people that are like, well, just do your best. You know, we're, we're playing a game here. You gotta, gotta try to grip it and, uh, and rip it. Grip it and rip it. And that's what Pickens does right there. Sits down Riley Jones for eighth strikeout of the game. The poncho is starting to come out at Sherry Parker Lee, and the cheer is starting to go up after that last strikeout. Yeah, that ball, ball up in the zone, that was a tough pitch to hit. Pickens comes right back at the next batter for strike one. Co Clara Chakova Kolotsi at the plate for South Dakota, senior catcher. Or check that, excuse me, Cla the other Clara, Clara Edwards at the plate now for the Coyotes. She takes strike two already in a 0-2 count. A two-way player. She started in the circle earlier today for the Coyotes, now trying to help them out on offense. 0-2 pitch from Pickens, and it's gonna miss inside for ball one. You don't see that super often anymore. You see a lot of POs and you know, pitchers only where they are just specializing because it's hard, it's hard enough to be a pitcher, but I got I got a lot of respect for a pitcher that hits. Pickens, one, two pitch, gets her swinging and missing for strike three. Make that strikeout number nine on the ninth for Carlin Pickens. Now once again, that, that ball on that outside part of the plate, got a ball off and Edwards, not, not even close. Sometimes you see pitchers coming out hot in that first inning is Chakova Kolatsi fouls this one off. A lot of the time, K's, there you go, K's for Queso. Make that nine strikeouts now for Carlin Pickens. And I believe that means some fans will get some yummy Queso oh, coming right. their way. Always a good thing. Clara, Clara Chikova Kolatsi at the plate now for Coyotes as she takes strike two. But a lot of the time you'll see pitchers come out hot and then settle in, maybe cool off a little bit. But right now, Carlin Pickens just picking up speed. She has her foot on the gas and she's not letting off. And you know, her pitch count doesn't need to get too high either. She's able to uh, you know, keep, keep the pitch count down, striking out a lot of batters. Defense is right there behind her. so. You can, if you can keep that pitch count down, you can you can go the full seven for sure. 0-2 pitch from Pickens. Upstairs, ball one. You saw Julia Katsoyanopoulos call time real quick behind the plate. It looks like she had some rain or water in, in her mask. Starting to come down a little bit harder here at Sherry Parker Lee. Rain starting to pick up a little bit. And Pickens starting to pick up a lot. 1-2 pitch, low inside for ball two. Yeah, you can you can let the the sprinkles, the rain, you can let it get in your head. But like Pickens is doing right now, she has that ball in her glove. She keeps the ball in her glove, keeps it protected. Because the second that ball comes out, it's wet. Swing and a miss, strike three. Carlin Pickens, fifth, trying to get something started for the Lady Vols. Corey Wedeking back in the circle as Rodriguez pulls this one hard down the left field line. Rodriguez 0 for 2 today. Someone that has worked hard to find her way into the lineup. Wasn't an everyday starter last season, but took advantage of her opportunities starting at second base today. Wedeking also Settling down in the circle after a rocky first inning as Rodriguez fouls this one off again. Well, what? you got to wonder how that, you know, what the game plan is coming into this inning. You're in your you know, third, fourth time through the lineup, and you want to make sure that you're adjusting accordingly. What Weta King is really hammering that inside part of the plate. And, most of these Lady Vol hitters have been at least a foot, half a foot off of the, the white line and given themselves a little bit of room. You can see Destiny Rodriguez absolutely 
hammering <laughs> that inside. Like, she's ready for it. She looks ready. So I just kind of wonder the, you know, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that dugout and see what Coach Malbo was telling him. Down in the dirt for ball three. Wedeking giving up three earned runs, three hits in that first inning. Since then, just one hit. As the rain starts to come down here at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. Lady Vols look to extend their lead. The full count to Rodriguez in the dirt ball four. And after some hard foul balls, you just kind of wonder, you know, is it you know, kind of mentally, are you are you not attacking that spot as hard? Did the rain get you on that one? You know, it's uh, the the freebies are what uh, what can kill you in this situation. Pinch runner for Destiny Rodriguez as Katie Taylor comes into the game. Lady Balls with a runner on first. And that will bring up the three hole hitter, McKenna Boo Gibson. Gibson, one of five Lady Balls players named to the preseason All SEC team this year, the most selections out of any team in the conference. A one for two today with an RBI as she takes ball one low in the zone. Gibson played most of last season at first base, shifting over to third for the start of 2024. A little bit of shift around the infield after Zeta Pooney underwent upper body surgery as Gibson takes ball three inside. Those last couple pitches I like a lot. Again, a, a 1 0 changeup on the outside corner. Uh, that screwball going in. She is, and as you can see, you know, Gibson's well off the plate right now. White King try to get her with a change. Now I believe that was ball three. So 3 0 the count now to McKenna Gibson, the runner on first. Gibson takes inside, strike one. And I just kind of wonder if, you know, scooting back, you challenge Wedeking to come into that inside corner, and if, if you feel it inside, then it's two balls inside, and you need to take it. Uh, but that, that screwball, that is her money pitch. That is what she's going to go to, and she's got to be able to place it. This one hit hard at the second baseman. Conti makes the play at two and over to one for the double play. Bang, bang play for the Coyotes middle infielders. Just like that, they have two outs in the inning. Conti did an amazing job fielding that. Not, you know, kind of pulling back or, or letting that ball play her. And then the ball is hit so hard. It's, it's a, like you said, a, a bang, bang play. Short stop to, to first base. And also a momentum booster as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Zeta Pooney now at the plate for Lady Vols. Homered her first at bat. That was a two run, three run home run to put the Lady Vols up three nothing. And that's been the difference so far today. Yeah, this game is well within reach for South Dakota. I mean, a, a hit here and there, and Wedeking continues to, you know, kind of place the ball where she wants to and really command her her pitches and, and command the, the circle, then, you know, it's, it's a one or two hit ball game from South Dakota being able to really pull away. Pooney fouls this one off, and excuse me, it was a two-run home run from Zeta Pooney. That was after Destiny Rodriguez was able to hit in Kiki Malloy, and then Pooney brought in Rodriguez after that. And then Lady Ball's bat's been quiet since, as you mentioned, Whitakeen really settling in now, even as the rain starts to come down here. 2-1 pitch to Pooney, holds for strike two. Yeah, there have been some hard ground balls, you know, a deep pop fly here and there, but you know, like you said, for the most part, not quite the fireworks that this team had in the last game. 
two down. A 2-2 pitch to Zeta Pooney. She reaches for this one, and that's going to get down, and it's going to get past Moser in right field. Zeta Pooney waved to three. Coach Weekly holds her up at third. Zeta Pooney comes up clutch with a triple. You know, with two outs, you really just got to keep that ball in front of you. There's no reason for that ball to get all the way to the wall. Again, I'll give you the the, the grass is probably pretty slick right now, you know, but and that that, oh, that got up on her pretty good. It, it, that's a tough play. That was pretty in between. I had it. I was under the impression that that had rolled a bit more. That's a very tough tough play to make. You mentioned the wet grass obviously playing a factor. Moser wishing she could take that one back. The senior though absolutely ha just has to get in front of that yeah, one. Yeah, she was she was crashing in hard, and that's that's just so such a tweener, you know, kind of ball. Uh, As Miller gets a hold of this inside pitch. See you later, Laura Miller with her first home run of this game and her fourth of the day. I mean, what a what a breakout day for Laura Miller. She she's had starts. She's had she's had a home run before today, but you know, this, a game like this and a weekend like this can really really boost your confidence going into conference play. This ball absolutely. I mean, she hit the last three pretty hard. That was high. <laughs> that was up there. That was impressive. Miller absolutely seeing beach balls up at the plate. Three home runs in her first game today. Another one here. And when the Lady Vols needed her to come up clutch, as Tennessee now takes a 5 nothing lead, bottom of the fifth. And that's the kind of thing that can, that, that instance right there can make it feel if you're South Dakota, a little bit less attainable <laughs> as the game goes on, because it's one thing to have runs scored on you, but you know, giving up big, big home runs, big momentum swings like that again with two outs. You know, that's that's a bubble buster right there. Sophia Nugent at the plate now for Tennessee. 0 for one today. The walk, trying to keep this two-out rally going for the Lady Vols. One one pitch to Nugent. Fouls this one back. Big cut. That momentum shift, you know, hitting is contagious, and that momentum shift can, even with two outs, you know, cause things to kind of go off the rails for South Dakota. Wedeking really needing another another strike. Another strikeout would be, you know, preferable for her. Get out of this inning. One two pitch, Nugent. The hard foul ball towards the third base dugout. And we talked about how Weta King was doing so well, keeping these Lady Vols hitters on their toes. Zeta Pooney just able to go with that outside pitch. And not that Moser that could have come up yeah, with that as I know, an out. I know. That it's, I don't want to take anything away, even from Moser um, or, or Weta King. I mean, Weta King is pitching a very good game. She's going to take this team very far in conference and possibly to the postseason. Um, and, the, you know, we haven't even seen their other pitchers <laughs> yet, you know, against Tennessee. So it's – if I'm – coach I'm I'm excited about this team you know they they have the makings of of a squad that when put when put together um, are going to be able to make some noise Nugent pops this one up calling for it is Moser and she's going to make the grab to end the inning but not before Tennessee pushes two more across and what a does what that a conference. That's tough. Tells you really everything tough. you need to it know really does. about the pitching in the SEC. Yeah, it does. Top of the six, Lady Vols up 5 nothing now is trying to fight their way back, leading the charge for the Coyotes. Olivia Conti. Rain continuing to come down here at Cherry Parker Lee. And check that. Looks like a pinch hitter for... South Dakota, Briley Hempy at the plate, the sophomore. Still looking for her first hit of the season. I'm trying to take a whack at the 2023 SEC Freshman of the Year in the circle. 
One one count now to Hempy. Pickens continuing to build steam as she goes through this game. 10 strikeouts so far and counting. This one hit hard but foul. Hempy hoping to try to find a way to slap something somewhere and get on base that way. Well, yeah, you imagine that one goes between the lines. I mean, that's if that's down down the third baseline or through the 5-6 hole, you know, she's she's on with at least one base, so like we talked about before, all you have to do is just kind of barrel it up and that ball will go. Sometimes slappers, just with the, their goal of just getting a piece of it, don't have to hit it too hard, don't have to hit it too far. Mm -hmm. Just hit it fair and try to use your wheels. As she takes a look at strike three, 11 strikeouts now for Carlin Pickens. Yeah, I'm not really sure what she was looking for on that one. That ball is over the heart of the plate with a two-strike pitch. You know, I'd be looking to, to put a bat on it. At least foul it off. So, I mean, yeah, stay alive. It's it's war with two strikes. Top of the lineup now for the Coyotes is Tatum Violata takes a first pitch strike. Violata 0 for 2 today. With a strikeout and a grounder to short as she pops this one up to shallow left field. Crashing in is Nugent. She'll make the ground for out number two. Violato has been one that has followed Coach Wagner's advice. Swing early, swing hard, and good things will happen. And you know, she she hasn't got on, but her contact has been has been pretty good today. South Dakota just with one hit in this ball game. Coming into today, hitting 229 as a team. As Autumn Iverson steps to the plate, takes strike one. He says that's definitely their biggest need for improvement is the offense. Defense, they're still trying to figure things out, but offensively just wants to see more production. Well, I think it's important, you know, you're recruited to play division one ball. Your mechanics are probably pretty good, you know. Focus on your timing, focus on your pitch selection, you know, focus on those things that um, are, are hard to do that, you know, you have, you have to mentally prepare for. Iverson pops this one up, calling for it is Kosoyanopoulos, calling her off is Mueller, but it goes right off the fingers of Mueller, who came crashing in hard and who came a long way from first base. Yeah, that was pretty far. Honestly, probably Kutsoinopoulos ball, but that ball just kept kind of trailing over. So, uh, you know, you have that, you have the lights, you have raindrops in your eyeballs uh, with all that. Yeah, look at that rain right there. Yeah, that's tough, that's tough. Hard to believe that the, the rain right now is not a factor as these two teams continue to battle through the elements. Iverson now with a, a new life after that pop fly dropping. A one two pitch now from Pickens. Inside gets her looking for strike three. Carlin. And a handful of strikeouts as well. She'll try to simmer down this red hot Lady Vols offense. Starting with number 10 on a leech. Leach coming into today, hitting 300. Hit in the two-hole spot last game for Tennessee. As the first pitch from Young comes in for a strike. Yeah, Young, <laughs> coach said that she was pitching on adrenaline and excitement last week, and then things kind of you know flattened out. It's easy to do as a young pitcher, as a freshman. You you get that burst of adrenaline, and you're just going after it, and then you know yeah you have another couple games to play and. Uh, you know, as a travel ball player, you play a, games upon games in a day and a weekend, and then all of a sudden you're a freshman. And you're like, why is seven innings wearing me out? Well, you traveled, you you know, you practiced a bunch. You're weightlifting. You know, there's a lot of things that wear on you, and so it's important for young pitchers, for freshmen, to uh, 
not necessarily pace themselves because I think that going game speed in games is important, but you know, kind of understand that uh, you've got to mentally be in it as much as you are physically. Leach goes down swinging, strike three. So as soon as Young comes in, she gets her first strike out of the game just like that. Yeah, this was a great pitch down in the zone, off speed. It's a, a tough pitch hit and a, and a good sequence by Young. Has a little bit of a, a little bit of a everything rice ball change up, and I think most impressive as she goes upstairs to Julia Kutsoyanopoulos. I think most impressive with Young might be her strikeout to walk ratio, 22 strikeouts now 23 in her eight walks. Yeah, I think it's really easy as a freshman pitcher to, you know, aim it let that ball get away from you, have wild pitches, but you know, the sooner that you can kind of, oh, that was dirty. <laughs> the sooner that you can kind of come into your into your own and uh, command the zone and pitch like a senior, even though you haven't been there that long, uh, that's only gonna help your team and help your staff. Katsoyanopoulos, one for one today, the single. She check swings that, umpire asks for help. This is no go. That rise is very good too. The the one before that kind of got away from from the catcher was not bad. I don't know if you saw it like how it it rose late, and that that what I is what I think makes Young an effective pitcher. It's not that it's moving a lot; it's how late it's moving. And same thing with her changeup. You know, it's it's looking pretty tasty up there, you know, ten feet out or so, and batters make their decision, and then all of a sudden it's falling off the table. Coach Wagner says their backbone this year will be their pitching staff coming in with a 2-1-4 ERA. 3-1 pitch from Young, and that will be strike two. But Soyanopoulos danced away from that one. Young continuing to grow quickly in her first season with South Dakota. Now trying to simmer down these Lady Vols bats. 3-2 pitch, upstairs, ball four. And she she throws it hard. She has good movement on it. I can I can see how Coach Wagner's excited about the staff and Young in particular, you know, as a as a freshman and growing in these big games. We talked in the Missouri State game about you know playing in regional atmosphere and postseason atmosphere in South Dakota with with this pitching staff could foreseeably you know make it that far and having a freshman with that kind of experience is going to be really invaluable. Coach Wagner saying they're they're key for this pitching staff this weekend stay consistent build and more confidence is this one is popped up calling for it is first baseman white she makes the grab for the second out of the inning. So Bella Faw, quick out, number two. Julia Katsoyanopoulos stays on one. So now two down, and guess who's up to bat? The All-American center fielder, Kiki Malloy, one for three today. And catalyst of this offense as she takes strike one inside from Young. Young maybe has a little bit more zip than Weta King does, and you could see on that one, Malloy just a little bit late on her take, but still off the plate as they were with, uh, with Weta King. Malloy takes the rise ball upstairs for ball one. Malloy, one of the most exciting players to watch in college softball, and Coach Weekly says, well, she's just the best player to watch in all of softball. That's high, high praise from someone that's been around, around this game as long and coached long as many All-Americans as she has. I mean, she has really high praise for Kiki Malloy. Malloy named to the top 50 players to watch for the third time this season. All, uh, all consensus, All-American. She hits this one hard to left field. Going back is Terreris. This goes off the wall. In comes Kutsoyanopoulos. And Malloy is held at two for the RBI double. Malloy coming up big. 
with the bat off the, the ball off the wall. Yeah, that's one of the hardest hits we've seen today off uh, from Kiki Malloy. And that ball up in the zone, inside part of the plate. Just short, just short in the warning track and bounces away from Terezas. And Kiki Malloy proving why she's, she's not all American, hitting, hitting when it counts. But timely hitting is so important. RBI double for Malloy as Katsoi Nopolis comes in, make it a 6 0 lead. This one popped up to short, but Bellana is there, no problem. That will end the inning, but not before the Lady Vols get another one. They extend their for the top of the seventh, 12 strikeouts and counting close to her career high 14. As the Coyotes will try to try to battle back here, their last chance at the plate. Gabby Mo uh, Moser at the in the box for the Coyotes here, trying to get something going. Moser, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts as she hits a grounder over to Rodriguez at 2, who makes the play at 1 for the first out. Yeah, I don't care who you're who you're facing or who you're up against, like in Division One softball, that many strikeouts is hard to come by. One hit is hard to to come by. You know, like Coach Wagner said, they, they have some work to do at the plate, but, you know, it's Carlin Pickens, a lot of kudos to her for the way she's moved the ball, the way she's moved through her pitches. She's thrown a very, very good game. The one hit off Carlin Pickens today comes from this young woman at the plate, Delaney White. Hit up the middle as she hits this one hard to short. Bella Foss says no problem. It's out number two. Makes you excited about conference play coming up next week for Tennessee as this one hit hard to Faw, able to get that second out. Nice job in the elements, but with Missouri right around the corner next weekend and Carlin Pickens looking like this just a couple <laughs> days before it gets you excited for what's next in her sophomore year. It does. Conference play is a whole nother animal. Like we talked about a lot of, there can be a lot of parody in the SEC. Um, you know, or you get injuries here and there. You're nursing certain things later on in the season. Um, a lot can change, but uh, this Tennessee team looks primed and ready to take on some SEC ball. Pickens upstairs for strike two. Tennessee with a big win earlier today over Missouri State, winning 16 to nothing. Not quite the offensive production in game two today, but still enough to lead 6 0 as Pickens takes care of the rest. Calls for time here. It's Rain still trickling down here at Cherry Park early. Still enough to be annoying, especially for a pitcher. Especially for, well, we're very picky about <laughs> <laughs> what's going on with the ball and our dirt and whatnot. And rightfully so, you touch the ball every true. single pitch. 0-2 count here to Mendoza, Alicia Mendoza. Trying to get something going. Last chance for the Coyotes here. Top of the seventh. Two down. And the 0-2 pitch from Pickens. In the dirt. And this one gets away from Katsoyanopoulos. Head coach Karen Weekly excited about this team, this new team this season, as they get ready for SEC play next week and carry with them. Some momentum, hopefully, coming off of the Tennessee Invitational this weekend. For two down, one-two pitch. Low for ball three. Fans still braving out this weather. <laughs> Die hard. Die hard, dedicated fans. And that will do it. Oh, that will do it for the free bag for Mendoza. Coach Pick, uh, Carlin Pickens walking off. Thought she had that one. And to be honest, Michelle, I thought so too. Let's take another yeah, look, at that one. look at that one. Look at that, because that was a close one. Maybe up in the zone. 
Kitsoinopoulos, you see her pitch she point was right ready back too. at her. Yeah, she was ready too. Well, I think on that last at bat, you know, you had she had some issue with the rain, um, kind of getting on the ball, wet ball, but you get a real case of the one mores. Like <laughs> I see one more pitch, and then uh, the ball goes in the dirt, and like she's doing right now, bearing down and throw that pitch over the plate and let your let your defense work. They have all day. Riley Jones at the plate for South Dakota. Runner on first for the Coyotes. The 0-2 pitch to Jones, swing and a miss, strike three. That does it. 13 strikeouts for Carlin Pickens today. The Lady Vols win it 6-0. The bats were solid today, but really this one.